In Scotland, there are so many green places to explore. I spent much of my time wandering in forests, finding peace in wild places. Stirred by the beauty of the woods, I wondered, how would you make a dish inspired by Scotland's forests? And why on earth would it involve this bottle of frozen vodka? That's all coming up on this episode of Chef Studio. The obvious first step would, of course, be to start from the ground up. For the soil, I'm making a simple chocolate sponge cake. To start off, I'm creaming together 175 grams of butter and 175 grams of sugar in a mixer fitted with the paddle attachment. Then I'm adding in two eggs, one at a time. For the dry ingredients, I'm whisking together 175 grams of self-raising flour and 50 grams of cocoa powder. Then I'm adding this into the batter and mixing until just combined. Lastly, I'm adding in a little bit of hot coffee. This makes the cake denser and helps to really bring out the chocolate flavor. Once baked and cooled, I'm tearing the cake into pieces and storing until I'm ready to plate. Now that we have our soil, the next thing that we need is some edible moss, which I'm making out of shortbread crumbs. I'm starting off by combining 62 grams of softened butter with 25 grams of sugar. At this point, I really wanted to add an earthy flavor that reminded me of the forest. I thought at first that I might use pine, but settled instead on the addition of rosemary. Rosemary and chocolate actually go really well together, and rosemary has a very distinct earthy pine flavor. I'm adding in about a tablespoon of finely chopped rosemary before mixing through 90 grams of flour. Since I'm going to be smashing this up anyways, I'm just flattening and rolling it out into one big sheet of dough and baking at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes until golden. Once it's cooled, I'm smashing it up to create my shortbread crumbs. Before whisking through a few drops of green food coloring and setting this aside to dry uncovered. Next, I'm making some pieces of edible timber made from chocolate and filled with a whipped rosemary and chocolate ganache. For the outer shell, I'm taping some acetate sheets to make small cylinders. Then I'm melting some chocolate over a bain-marie and tempering it using the seed method before transferring the melted chocolate to a piping bag. I find the easiest way to coat the inside of the acetate cylinders is to fill them completely with chocolate, then let the excess run out before placing them aside to set. Once set, I'm removing the acetate, then using a pastry brush with some more melted chocolate to paint on the wood grain texture. For the filling, I'm heating 150 milliliters of whipping cream and one sprig of rosemary over low heat for about five minutes until the flavor of the rosemary has infused. I'm removing the sprig of rosemary, then pouring the warm rosemary cream over 100 grams of dark chocolate and whisking to combine. Then I'm popping this in the fridge to cool. Once cooled, I'm whipping the ganache until light and fluffy, then transferring it to a piping bag with a round tip. Then I'm just gently filling each chocolate casing. For the chocolate mousse mushrooms, I'm combining some gelatin powder with water and setting this aside to bloom for at least 10 minutes. I'm making a French style mousse, which starts by combining two egg yolks and 50 grams of sugar in a bowl over a bain-marie, then whisking this until it turns thick and fluffy. That gets set aside to cool while I whisk up 250 milliliters of heavy cream. I'm then adding the cream into the egg mixture in small additions. I'm gently whisking in the first addition, then folding in the others to keep the mousse light and airy. Once that's combined, I'm adding in 150 grams of melted chocolate and folding this through. Then I'm melting my bowl of bloomed gelatin in the microwave for about 15 seconds. Then I'm gently folding this through the mixture as well before transferring my mousse to a piping bag with a round tip. 
I'm piping small cone shapes for the base of the mushrooms onto a lined baking tray, then transferring this to the freezer. For the mushroom tops, I'm piping the mousse into semi-sphere silicone molds before getting these in the freezer as well. Once completely frozen, I'm dipping my mushroom pieces into a combination of 75% white chocolate, 25% cocoa butter that I've melted together. Adding the cocoa butter thins out the melted chocolate so the coating is thin and crisp. For the finishing touches, I'm making a red mirror glaze for the mushrooms and creating a few simple chocolate garnishes. This is the part where the edible forest really comes together. And where you'll find out what we needed that vodka for. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and that you've hit the bell button to be notified when the next episode goes live. If you'd like to support me in creating more series like these, consider becoming a patron. Links for my Patreon are in the description box below.